In this podcast, I want to talk about London dispersion forces, which are the weakest type of intermolecular bonding, and they form between nonpolar molecules. At the end of this podcast, you should be able to explain to me in writing, and maybe using some images, how a London dispersion force forms between two nonpolar molecules. So, you need to remember nonpolar molecules don't have a permanent dipole moment. They don't have a positive or negative end um, in the molecule. Yet, these molecules still can form intermolecular forces between them. And we call these London dispersion forces. They're named after a chemist called London. When you look at many nonpolar molecules, um, a lot of them are actually gases. And gases, if you remember, don't have any uh, intermolecular forces between them. They're just flying all over the place. So the fact that most of these nonpolar molecules actually are gases at room temperature tells you that the forces between nonpolar molecules are extremely weak. But there are some nonpolar molecules that can be found at room temperature as liquids and as solids. This is uh, the halogens, and as you go down the halogens, here you have fluorine, which is a diatomic molecule, it exists as a gas, its boiling point is minus 188.12 degrees. Chlorine, Cl2, is also a gas at room temperature, but you notice that its boiling point is getting higher. But when you get to bromine, Br2, bromine is actually found as a liquid at room temperature. Its boiling point is 20, uh, 58.8 degrees. We're going to consider um, the boiling, let's just erase that. We are going to consider room temperature to be 21 degrees Celsius. So bromine is a liquid at room temperature. And lastly, iodine is found as a solid at room temperature. And remember that these are all nonpolar molecules. So that tells us that nonpolar molecules can form intermolecular forces between them. They just happen to be very, very weak. One of the questions we're going to address is why do you see this trend of going from a gas down to a solid um, as you move down the halogens? And hopefully by the end of this podcast you'll be able to answer that question. So there's several steps to explaining how a London dispersion force forms between nonpolar molecules. The first thing you need to recognize is that most molecules are atoms, that you're going to have a very, very small nucleus on the center, and that you have your electrons arranged in these electron clouds. And the electrons are constantly moving. And their movement is sort of random. We can't predict where they're going to be, but they're constantly moving. So what can happen at any instant is that you might have more electrons on one side of the molecule than the other, which means that this side of the molecule would become slightly negative relative to the other side, which would be slightly positive. And we call this an instantaneous dipole because it appears just for an instant. And so this instantaneous dipole is caused by the constant motion of the electrons and the fact that you could theoretically get more electrons on one side of the molecule than the other. So that's the first step, is that molecule A, suddenly a instantaneous dipole appears in the molecule, but it's only there for a very, very brief moment. So now I want you to imagine that we here we have uh, molecule A. It has this instantaneous dipole in it. It has a slightly negative and slightly positive end. So what's going to happen to any molecule that's adjacent or next to it, like molecule B? How will this instantaneous dipole affect it? Well, clearly what's going to happen is if you have an instantaneous dipole with all these negative electrons on this side, they are going to repel the electrons in molecule B and push them over to the other side. So, And that's going to induce or create a dipole in molecule B. And so we call this molecule, this dipole that now exists in molecule B, an induced dipole. Induced means caused or to... I mean, a good example of the word induced is when, you, when I think of um, birth. Sometimes uh, a woman can't give birth, and so you give her some drugs that trigger uh, her to give birth, and that's called a, you induced 
the pregnancy. So that's a way to remember the word induced. So induced means this it's a juice dipole has been caused by the instantaneous dipole that was in molecule A. So now we have these two molecules, molecule A and molecule B. They both have these dipoles. Molecule A has this instantaneous dipole, and molecule B has an induced dipole. So you have these positive and negative ends in the molecule, so clearly they will be attracted to each other. So a force or an attraction will form between these two molecules. And that's what we call the London dispersion force. Now, you need to recognize that this is going to be extremely weak. And these, because the electrons are constantly moving, these dipoles will form and then collapse and then reform and collapse again. So this London dispersion force is only going to be there for an instant. It's going to be a very because the dipoles themselves are temporary. They keep forming, breaking apart, forming again. So this is why these London dispersion forces are the weakest type of intermolecular force. Now, one critical thing to remember is this, is that the larger or the bigger the molecule, the more electrons it's going to have in it. And therefore, not only will that mean there's more likely to be these instantaneous dipoles forming, but the instantaneous dipoles can actually be stronger the more electrons you have. And so the larger the molecule, the stronger the London dispersion forces will be between these large molecules. And so that's really what's going on as you go down here. Fluorine and chlorine are gases uh, because they're very, very small. And so even if they did form these London dispersion forces, which they do, they're so weak that it actually is not strong enough to bring them together as liquids. Whereas bromine, it's a lot larger. Its mass is 159.81 grams per mole. So that means it's a much larger molecule than um, chlorine above it. And that mass is large enough that it has enough electrons that when they do form these instantaneous dipoles, that they can actually hold it together as a liquid. These are the London dispersion forces between bromine molecules are not strong enough to form a solid, but they are strong enough to form a liquid. And then lastly, iodine down the bottom here, it is a much, much larger molecule than all the others. And it's large enough and has enough electrons that it can actually form these instantaneous induced dipoles so that its London dispersion forces are strong enough to hold it together as a solid at room temperature. So this is a very important thing you need to remember is that the size of the molecule and this goes for both polar and nonpolar molecules. They both form London dispersion forces. So the bigger the molecule, the stronger these London dispersion forces will be between the, the molecules. And so that's going to affect the boiling point. So the last example I wanted to show you are the group of molecules called the alkanes. They just contain carbons and hydrogens. Um, over here we start off with methane. It has one carbon. So this is the number of carbons, and so and it has four hydrogens. Here are the melting and boiling points, and then over here are the states. And so you can see a pattern that as you go down, starting at methane, which has one here, all the way down to decane, which has ten carbons, you can see this pattern from going from solid uh, from gas down to liquid. And then there's a bit of a gap here, but if we look over here, you can have keep adding carbons to these molecules and more hydrons and, they get, and the bigger and bigger they get till eventually you're going to have some that will even form solids. So this also is showing you the trend in nonpolar molecules because all of these alkanes are nonpolar. The bigger the molecule, the more electrons it has, therefore the stronger the London dispersion forces will be between the molecules. And so you're going to see this trend from being a gas to a liquid finally being a solid for these very, very, very large nonpolar molecules. So hopefully this vodcast answer, addresses that question and now you can, under, can explain, first of all, uh, why a um, London dispersion force is created between nonpolar molecules and lastly a little bit about how the size of the molecule can also affect the strength of the London dispersion force between the molecules.